Spring has sprung. Secretary's Day has come and gone. Tokyo is hosting the Paralympics. So Casual Day 2021 has a very special meaning. There have been some gold medals, some world records being broken. This means 2021, as much as it carries, the Olympics meant for 2020 has got more smiles for us. We've just bade winter goodbye in a month in which we celebrated and appreciated the women of this nation. Greetings. My name is Buyan Izwani. I'm truly thrilled to be engaging with you on this particular subject of strategic management. The managing of strategy happens at various levels inside organizations. Entrepreneurs like yourselves will have worked out what it is you're wanting to do as you entered the industry when you did. Some of you are in a corporate environment and your being selected to be a part of this program is in advancement of a particular organizational strategy. The management of that strategy will require you to be fully aware of the fact that strategies leak when they are not owned throughout. Entrepreneur visualizes, senior management conceptualizes, middle management translates, and elsewhere there's the operation of strategy. Too often, because of poor communication, the actual execution of strategy has various levels of effectiveness. Let's take this time to work together in the framing of strategy and the management of strategy. We will introduce it, we will formulate it, we will execute it, and I'd like to believe that you will want to take it much further to ensure implementation goes beyond you as the leader or manager of your enterprise. In outlining strategic management, we will pay attention to three specific areas, and then review and plan ahead. The first thing, of course, is to draw a very clear introduction to strategic management. This will be followed by a conversation on business 1.0, which is conceiving your strategy. Then we will follow that with 2.0, which is executing the strategy. This is absolutely critical because many organizations get to be able to formulate very elaborate and beautiful strategies, but fail at executing those strategies. The advent of COVID-19 has brought about a revision of all we do in the space of strategy. The past 500 plus days have caused us to be able to revisit the way in which we had set our own strategies way back in 2019. Some of you have just gotten into the program, while others have been in, in the entrepreneurial space for a longer period of time. Adaptation is key to survival. Darwin put it this way, it's not the fastest nor the strongest that survive when times of change come. It is the ones that are adaptable that are going to be able to survive. In strategic management, we're talking survival as well as thriving. Let's engage with this as we go forward. The pandemic has forced us to reset our strategies, reset our organizations. The direction we were on has had to be reorganized. We've been forced to be able to reimagine the entities we're a part of and rethink our approaches. 
rethink our strategies. Without the re, we would easily find ourselves repeating that which was in place pre-COVID. And so often we'll find ourselves hankering to those days before COVID. And we keep asking if we will be able to return back to normality. Well, truth is, we never will get the normalcy that was before COVID. We all have to reimagine our organizations, rethink our approaches, and get to a better level altogether. As we rethink our organizations, we'll be able to take them to points of survival and, indeed, points of thriving and growing exponentially. Rethinking our organization requires that we reframe the way in which we see the world. How we see the world determines what we do. What we do determines the results we get. When we see the world as attractive to us, we will put in place strategies that are going to take us towards embracing those attractive circumstances. However, if we see it as being hostile, chances are we will come with reactive strategies, some of which may succeed and most of which will actually fail. So, let's put on new lenses. Let's look into the organizations we're in and plan afresh so that we can get better results. Being players in the agricultural environment, we have a full appreciation of the importance of sustainability. Whatever enterprises we put together have to be such that they are sustainable. Future generations can build on them. What is going to be critical is that we ensure that with the strategies we formulate, we have organizational performance that will distinguish us from anybody else who is in the sector with us. We also want to be able to make sure that the people that are working with us are performing at their peak level. We want superior individual performance. For that to happen, we will need to ensure that we are providing the right kind of leadership. Leadership is about ensuring effective execution of ideas that have been put together with the intention of growing our businesses, with the intention of adding value in the marketplace so that others will choose our enterprise when afforded the chance to do so. Let's now turn our attention to the elements that make up strategic management. These are strategic inputs, strategic actions, and strategic outcomes. In the space of strategic inputs, our ability to define and understand the internal and external environment within which our enterprise operates and formulate our vision and mission, along with that, our objectives and key goals we want to achieve will distinguish us from organizations and persons inside organizations who have not paid attention to those. Strategic actions that require our attention will be formulation of strategy and execution of the same. And the strategic outcomes will be able to tell us whether we have a competitive advantage and we are truly the organization that customers need to be able to choose to do business with.
The success and relevance of our enterprise is determined by a whole variety of stakeholders. These are individuals, groups and organizations that can affect our vision, our mission, and they are affected by our strategic outcomes being achieved or not, and have enforceable claims on our performance. It is critical that we are deliberate in identifying who the key stakeholders are in relation to our business. Our organization's effectiveness is determined by how well we meet the stakeholders, specifically the customer's needs. There will be others who are playing in the same field as ourselves. The gap identified between the existing needs and future needs and what is being provided right now affords us a chance to determine whether we can put our own enterprise into the playing field. We get to be able to determine right from there our key purpose, our reason for existence. When our purpose is achieved with excellence, it leads us to the articulation of our vision looking into the future. And associated with that will be key behaviors that are going to be enshrined by the values we choose. Flowing from that will be our ability to develop a strategy. That strategy will be backed up by processes, structures, and systems, which we set up so that the organization and the people in it can follow those processes, structures, and systems without having to refer to the founder of the business, the senior leadership of the business. We know for a fact that how people see themselves, see the organization, see the customers, and everything else in between will influence their behavior. And that behavior, when repeated, forms the culture. It is for us to be able to determine what kind of culture we want to put in place. As agripreneurs, we clearly are much closer to the operations of natural laws. Therefore, the culture we'll be formulating will be principle-centered. It is imperative that we put in place something that we can be proud of and go with wherever we are afforded the chance to present our story to others in the marketplace. Ireland, Huskisson, and Hitz suggest that vision is the picture of what the enterprise wants to be, and in broad terms, what it wants to ultimately achieve. When you've got that picture and it is vivid, it is easier to sell it to others as well. To shape our mission, we need to be able to ask what business do we intend to compete in and which customers do we intend to serve. When that is clear, we have permission to do the work we want to do and permission to invite others to work with us.
The management of strategy varies from organization to organization. Size matters. Sole proprietor enterprises will be all-inclusive. But when organizations move from small to medium, they begin to take a different shape. Big organizations will have corporate-level strategy management, and that will be done by the C-suite, the board of directors, and corporate staff who are usually located at head office. You will find in medium-sized enterprises and small enterprises that there will be business-level strategy management, which is carried out at divisional level. And divisional managers and staff would be able to handle that, be it in a car manufacturing environment or in the farming situation like yours, may very well be in the actual canning and transportation, all of those would be business levels. At a functional level, it is important to translate strategy into the day-to-day -day activities of your finance department, your human resources department, your shared services in terms of ICT. But obviously, again, depending on the size of your organization, you may not have the functional business and corporate levels in place, or you could be doing all of those. It is just important to know that there is a level of the organization where the defining of strategy is put together, and then the translation of that gets to be done at the next level, and the communication and implementation gets to be carried out at the final level. So we have introduced strategic management. We've come to understand that we have strategic inputs, strategic actions, and we will have strategic outcomes. The next section is going to be paying particular attention into strategic inputs and strategic actions at the strategy formulation level.